everybody who's, good, who's late today, we know what they were doing last night, or early this morning. So, uh, thanks, Matt. Um, and just a little housekeeping uh, thing. If you're behind one of these beautiful posts, you may want to move because uh, as mayor, I found that sometimes it helps to have a few visuals, so I think you're going to want to see the screen. Much better than listening to me, I think. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, perhaps even at uh, this hour, uh, when someone greeted you, they may have said, what's new? I get that question often. So what better time to answer with about over 100 of my closest friends than right now? I'm going to roll through this presentation relatively quickly. So, you can rest assured, though, that uh, I can elaborate on anything. Simply give me a call. Also, we're taping this today, and it will be made available on the city's website as well as the chambers. As I review uh, some of what's new in DeKalb, we realize that we must appreciate the old many of the landmarks in our community. Isn't this a great picture? Almost a microcosm of our city. Dan, can you see? I see your dog. <laughs> uh, this is a First Street and Lincoln Highway. But let's take a pictorial journey uh, to some of what's new during the past year. Let's do some trash talking, shall we? <laughs> Few issues received as much discussion than City Council's decision to change refuse vendors. No question, waste management had served this city well for 30 years, but the integrity of the bidding system helped that council to decide, this council, close vote. Another new initiative sets up a competitive stance between an old vendor, Comcast, and Metronet. Fiber is currently being installed <coughs> excuse me, in certain sections of town, and DeKalb's progress into becoming more of a smart city is assured. Now, several of our initiatives involve collaboration with Northern. Perhaps the most comprehensive is taking the final steps in consolidating the VAC and the Husky Line bus systems. Uh, this all started in earnest years ago, but really started big time this past August, and it will be staged throughout the community during the coming months. Cornfest provided the opportunity to start up free Wi-Fi in our downtown area. Working with a vendor digital lobby and with financial assistance from NIU, we now can see the potential of data gathering coupled with internet access for citizens and visitors alike. Tremendous potential. Veo Ride is another collaborative initiative that will serve not only Northern, but those bikers in our community as well. A positive result will be increased visibility throughout our city. For those arriving in our community, as well as for us who travel a lot locally, there should be no doubt this is a college town. And this banner initiative between Northern and DeKalb has provided visible proof of the pride we have. Proudly DeKalb. Cohen, Proudly, and wow, when someone who has not been downtown for some time, it's taken on a new look. The cornerstone of downtown development has been, well, Cornerstone, a John Pappas project bolstered by the use of tax increment financing. It joined Sundog IT just a block away as the two largest downtown improvements. Now quickly, here are a few other new points of pride. Beef Shack, a new restaurant on West Lincoln Highway. 
Duncan on East Lincoln Highway. And if you haven't heard properly, the decision has been made to take the word donuts out of that corporate name. So we're going to just say Duncan in the past. Also, Walmart on Sycamore Road had some major reconstruction. You know, these are good examples from Beef Shack to Duncan to Walmart of independent owners, small franchises, and the huge national chain like Walmart. Now, new construction continues throughout the community. Uh, here, a concept of Plaza de Kell, a mixed-use development with commercial and housing at 2nd and Lincoln. Have you driven on Bethany Road lately? Yeah, I know. It's road construction time again. But this new multi-million dollar investment into our health care community is huge. Uh, scheduled to open on November 10th, this project, the, the Northwestern Medical Center's Wellness Center, this project is clear evidence of how important a national player like Northwestern Medicine is making in our community. Soon, ground will be broken on Annie Glidden Road, where Hilton will have a Bard City presence with its Home Two Suites Hotel. I must say that this project, too, was one of the most controversial developments during the year. My vote may have decided its fate. It was not an easy decision, given the, given the outpouring of neighborhood sentiment. I took a look at the pros and the cons, and I was comfortable with our, uh, with our council decision. Just as adjacent to the Noel subdivision uh, is Debonair Farms, which has been a catalyst for, well, finally, for some residential housing starts. As a matter of fact, we'll probably end the year with over 25 new housing permits. That's a considerable increase from what the past several years has seen. It's a good start. Let's keep that momentum going. Ah, infrastructure. <laughs> Streets. You know, we kicked this down the road too much over the years. It's going to take some time to catch it. Uh, this year, our major improvement project was in the historic Elwood neighborhood. It looks great, and we'll see what our budget will allow in the future. We need to fill potholes also as we plod forward. We should be spending five, six million dollars a year on streets and street maintenance in the city of DeKalb. This year we're spending 1.7 million. Well, enough on streets. Let's look at infrastructure on a slightly smaller pathway. It's the Kishwaukee Kiwanis multi-use pathway to be specific. Another example of great collaboration between state and local partners with cooperation from the feds and the railroad. Recently opened this trail running under the Union Pacific and the West Lincoln Highway Bridge, Lakes Prairie Path with the Lagoon area on NIU's campus. Wonderful for biking, running, walking, give it a try. Speaking of streets, another rollout that resulted in considerable discussion was our police department's coordination of the Safe Streets Initiative, translated by most as parking restrictions. This all grew out of this community's insistence that public safety was paramount to our citizenry. As we engaged folks in our Annie Glidden North revitalization, it was clear that we needed to take some cars off of some streets while tweaking the rules for residents and non-residents alike. Other safety, public safety measures worthy of mention, improved lighting, thanks to Commonwealth Edison in improving, helping us improve that. Our ISO, ISO class two fire rating, which actually helps everyone in our community in terms of insurance rates because of the effectiveness that that rating shows uh, inspectors for fire protection. 
our police mental health collaboration project. Uh, the police department uh, worked hard to get some grants for that. And Project Hope, which addresses some of the opioid, opioid issues in our community. Uh, not only a, a safe disposal of, op, of op, opioids, but also uh, a program in which uh, we can, can help those uh, who have taken drugs with this drug, I think it's called Narcan. Um, so uh, th this, is, this is good stuff. We've gotten to know it as simply as AGM. But this initiative has involved so many, has taken so much time, but has resulted in so much positive life. Starting as a 30-member task force over a year ago, as this community has taken a look at how to revitalize the northwest quadrant of our committee, of our community. Uh, Andy Glidden North focused on four major areas, transportation, infrastructure, and open space, community services, safety and security, and housing and commercial development. From it, the top 10 implementation priorities were established. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the material on this slide, but it's significant. It is the meat of the matter. And for those interested in seeing what we'd like to see accomplished in that neighborhood, those priorities are near the beginning of the entire AGM plan now on the city's website. There will be dollar signs <laughs> attached to the, believe me. And we're going to be asking a wide variety of potential resources to help us implement this plan. So stay tuned. You know, we worked hard to enhance our communications with our citizens. Our e-newsletter uh, is now available monthly. Our alert decal system is facilitated through phone, through email, through text. We're, we'll soon be asking folks to get involved in refreshing and improving our website. Now we've got to take some time to have some fun though, don't you think? Over the past year we've seen a dramatic increase in Egyptian theater programming, the music at the mansion event staged by Mike Embry in the Park District had a sensational summer. Just a couple of weekends ago, the DeKalb Corn Classic 10K race, coupled with the Rotary Taste of DeKalb event. Hats off to uh, all of those who work so hard to assure that we, indeed, are having fun right here in our own community. I'm frankly not so sure that we have the best handle on how we promote DeKalb as part of our larger county community. I think we need to do a better job of coordinating our special events and our tourism efforts in a more collaborative fashion. And we're going to work hard. We try to get out and about uh, as a staff, uh, whether it be at the Challenge football game, staging a selfie event uh, here on the right uh, uh, for a national competition, or hosting legislators. Uh, Adam Kinziger was in town. Uh, we show uh, him uh, the airport. Uh, uh, we're going to have another legislator in a, in a couple weeks come over and, and see our airport. Very, very important to us. Speaking of our airport, uh, we completed its strategic plan. Now we need to engage more folks as we attempt to improve its revenue and widen its usage. I'd like to start discussions with other county municipalities in this regard. This needs to be truly a regional airport. We continue to engage our partner taxi districts as we decide the merits of continuing our tax increment financing. This is undoubtedly one of the most difficult things for most folks, including your mayor, to wrap their minds around. The city has benefited from TIF 1 and TIF 2. Now, with a host of economic development-driven projects on the horizon, we will have serious dialogue <coughs> on TIF 3. Also on our radar, big time, is our FY19 budget process. We got a good start on it during the past year, early on, 
And now, with the assistance of the Finance Advisory Committee and with the involvement of our employees, we will continue discussions on how we can address a million and a half dollar deficit. A million and a half dollars. Those decisions will face our city council over the next several weeks. In addition, this council will be completing the process of selecting a new city manager. Our current interim, Molly Talkington, Molly, take a stand up in case you haven't met her. She's done a superlative job in holding down the fort for the past several months. As a matter of fact, allow me to put up a slide on our executive team that has marshaled a collective effort in City Hall and indulge me just a couple of minutes to make a few comments on each and every one of those folks. Top left, Molly Talkington, Finance Director, Interim City Manager. Ray Munch, also sitting here. Ray has been one of our uh, management analysts, doing a great job. Uh, we've asked him to step up as our Assistant City Manager uh, for the short term. <clears throat> Dean Frieders, our City Attorney. Dean, uh, when I first took office a year and a half ago, I said, Dean, you have a lightning rod as tall as I am on the top of your head because legal decisions cause controversy, for sure. Joe Ellen Charlton, Joe Ellen's back here, our Community Development Director, stretched a staff that, you know, I said, we need economic development. They are working so hard for, for, for all of you. Uh, Eric Hicks, our longtime uh, fire chief, great guy. Mark Thorson, bottom left, our IT director. Gene Lowry, our police chief. You know, yesterday I was listening to WLBK in the news, and I heard Gene Lowry pushing back on some of the recommendations for cuts that the council will have to consider. And I saw Gene yesterday, and I said, Gene, you know, some mayors would really, really be PO. But I commend you for standing up for your department. And I would want each and every one of our, of our department heads to stand up and say, hey, this is something we ought to take another look at. We're not going to be able to react positively to each and every one of our department heads wants for FY19. But the fact that Gene stood up and said that publicly, I have no problem whatsoever with it. Uh, Tim Holman, our Public Works Director, our Public Works again stretched with streets, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they're doing a great job, and so is Tim. Uh, Aaron Stevens, another management analyst. Uh, Aaron has been primarily responsible for not only our FOIA, our Freedom of Information, but also our uh, uh, Annie Glidden North initiative. And finally, bottom right, our executive assistant, Ruth Scott, who, frankly, as executive assistant to not only the city manager, but to the mayor, has also been a deputy city clerk. And uh, while we did not have a city clerk following the resignation of our elected city clerk several months ago, our deputy, Ruth Scott, stepped in. So she was wearing like three hats, and she's done a great job. And there is a picture of our elected officials. <clears throat> and this is one of our newest pictures. Why new, you may ask? Because several weeks ago, we were joined by someone who is normally elected, but was appointed by me due to the resignation of our elected city clerk. At the far right in this picture is Lynn Fazekas, our new clerk. When I appointed her, I think she was even surprised. More than a few eyebrows were raised. But folks, I think this is going to work out very, very well. Lynn joins this team of aldermen who value dialogue, who value give and take, and who know the value of consensus. Let me just introduce them if you haven't met them. To the far left, the lovely and talented Dave Jacobson, our first ward alderman, youngest guy on our city council, very, very outspoken on a number of issues, so valuable to getting that consensus. Uh, back left, uh, right next to Dave, is Mike Marquardt from our third ward. Uh, Mike sometimes takes quiet resolve to 
this, this item issue, but he's very, very effective, and I appreciate all he's done for our city council. Bill Fanukin, who's also here today, our second board alderman, my alderman in the city of DeKalb, uh, been here now, and uh, Bill is, is so rooted in community. Uh, in the back, Pat Fagan, one of our newer aldermen, Pat's on our fourth board. Pat is part of uh, a, a small group of folks, myself included, who are doing some of the pre-screening on our city manager process, and I appreciate Pat's uh, assistance. Uh, Mike Verbeek, sixth ward in the back. Mike, very, very independent, very independent thinker. Uh, really, really enjoy working with Mike Verbeek from our six. Uh, the other lady here in the picture is our fifth ward uh, alderman, Kate Norico, who will be honored in a couple weeks at the, Athe at the Athena Award as a uh, woman of accomplishment. So we congratulate her prematurely on that, but I think that has been announced. And finally in the back, uh, our seventh ward alderman, Tony Faber. Again, another young guy who, uh, again, independent thinker and really, really uh, uh, does a nice job for us. As I conclude this morning, it's obvious that I've only scratched the surface of what's happening in our fair city. When I did my official state of the city late last year, and yes, the official version of the state of the city, will be delivered as mandated at City Hall, at City Council later this year. But there were several issues that I addressed then. One was inspections. We simply do not want another Lord Stanley's fiasco this year, or again ever. Let me say right now, this city will do whatever makes sense to help businesses set up shop and then let them alone. Do we expect them to pass routine inspections? Yes. Do we have every reason to expect businesses to comply with city ordinances? You bet. And will the city work closely with them to assure their success? Absolutely. In DeKalb, we have so many folks genuinely wanting to help. Many of them serve on one of our 14 boards and commissions. So whether it be weeds, helping our nonprofit community, smoking on patios, crafting a welcoming community proclamation, or deciding whether or not we want backyard chickens. We want citizen input. And that's what this community should strive for. And I will pledge to you this morning, transparency is one of the keys of getting the consensus in our city. I hope this morning's short presentation has provided a preview of what we're doing and why we're doing it. Your continued involvement is so important. Your attention today is much appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> Northern Illinois University drew me here in 1961, and with the exception of a couple of years overseas, courtesy of Uncle Sam, DeKalb has been my home. Met my wife at NIU, games here, educated our boy at Northern. We all know how key this institution is to the very vitality of the city of DeKalb. The partnerships that our municipality and NIU have grown over the years is admirable indeed. NIU is ingrained in our very culture, whether it be working there, meeting there, going to school there, watching a concert or athletic event there, Ask your friends and neighbors if they're NIU grads. There's a pretty good chance they might be. And we need to work hard to ensure that much like many of us who have chosen to further our careers, our very lives in the city of DeKalb, we need to make this the kind of community attractive to young people. Northern's president, Lisa Freeman, has pledged her support in collaborating with the city of DeKalb. She's asked others on her team to do the same. Likewise, I will continue to meet with those at my alma mater for the good of our community. I'd like to introduce a woman who cares so much about community, and the Board of Trustees wisely took the word acting out of her title. Please help me welcome the president of NIU, Dr. Lisa Freeman.
It is an honor and a privilege to be invited to share the stage with Mayor Smith to reflect on the state of our community in 2018. It's a testament to the strength of our city university partnership that NIU is routinely invited to participate in this way. And the strength of that partnership is also evidenced by the great turnout from NIU leadership for this breakfast this morning. There isn't time to individually recognize all of them, but could members of the NIU leadership team please stand so people can see who you are. When I stood here a year ago, we had just received our first state budget in nearly two years. Along with our public university colleagues around the state, we have spent a good deal of time since then trying to reverse the damage that was done, restore financial stability to our institutions. That work continues in 2018, but at NIU, we are not allowing those challenges to limit our thinking about the future. We are moving forward rather than looking backward. As we think strategically about the next 5, 10, and even 20 years, there's a common theme in all of our discussions, and that is partnership. Virtually every major initiative we are involved in or are planning involves partnerships with other colleges and universities, with the private sector, with philanthropists, and of course, with our local community. The mayor's already mentioned a handful of recent examples. The merger of the local bus system to create a better and less expensive public transportation system in DeKalb and Sycamore. The connection of the bike path and walking trail through our campus to the DeKalb Nature Trail and Prairie Park. Bringing the very popular VO Ride bike rental service to NIU and DeKalb and installation of the more than 250 banners up and down Lincoln Highway and Annie Glidden Road. These are all projects that could only happen with city university partnerships. There are quality of life improvements that benefit all of our citizens, and we're proud to have been partners to bring them to life. Sometimes partnerships grow out of regular interaction between individuals or entities, as with the projects I just mentioned. But other times they develop out of unplanned conversations and chance encounters. And here's one such example. The head of our computer science program, Dr. Nick Coronas, was having a conversation with one of his alumni who work at Discover Financial Services. Nick was interested in providing new research opportunities for his undergraduate students. Turned out, Discover was looking for ways to capture the innovative thinking of tech-savvy college students for product development. The result is a newly renovated space in Founders Memorial Library dedicated to a new program called Code Orange, code for coders and orange for Discover. Forty undergraduate students will be paid to work on new Discover technologies in the areas of mobile software development, web application coding, and person-to-person -person payment systems. In addition to the great experience for our students, Code Orange has attracted significant national media attention to NIU and to Cal, including from the Wall Street Journal. A great example of a university industry partnership with countless benefits for both partners and we'll be dedicating that space in the library later today. Up to this point, I've talked about partnerships on some very well-defined individual projects. I'd like to shift now to three other initiatives, all very large undertakings that contain multiple programs and many potential partners. In all three cases, we believe these initiatives can be huge game changers for our university and for DeKalb. First, the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, signed into law late last year, created a program aimed at targeting underdeveloped areas with new private investment. The Opportunity Zone program provides significant tax advantages for investors who reinvest capital gains into projects in these zones. This very new and not yet well understood program caught the attention of City of DeKalb economic planner Jason Michnick. With only days to apply, Jason successfully nominated a section of Northwest DeKalb for Opportunity Zone designation. 
That area includes nearly all of our DeKalb campus, as well as most of the Eddie Wooden North Corridor. Since learning of this designation, we've met with financiers, and we've been told that DeKalb offers a combination of characteristics not seen anywhere else in the country. Peri-urban location, access to interstate highways, rail, and an airport, existing fiber optic networks, and a respected research university. We've also heard that the amount of private money available for opportunity, opportunity zone investments nationwide is more than $6 trillion, and that investors are anxiously awaiting the final IRS guidelines that will help them choose the best projects. At NIU, we've chartered an Opportunity Zone Task Force. We affectionately call it the Ozone Task Force. And it's developing projects for consideration. Generally speaking, the areas we're looking at include community revitalization, manufacturing, healthcare, and food systems innovation in the context of community sustainability. You'll be hearing more about Opportunity Zones in the near future. But here, I want to give a shout out to Jason Mitchin for his great work in recognizing the opportunity and including our campus in the proposal he submitted. That was a great work. <laughs> The second game-changing partnership I want to tell you about involves the related entities of the Illinois Innovation Network and the Discovery Partners Institute. The latter is often abbreviated DPI. The Illinois Innovation Network will link DPI, a public-private research institute led by the University of Illinois System and headquartered in Chicago, with partners across the state. $500 million has already been appropriated to fund the project. As the primary hub of the Illinois Innovation Network, the Discovery Partners Institute, or DPI, will facilitate research projects that combine the expertise of faculty at multiple universities. We've been working with our University of Illinois colleagues to become the first non-U of I affiliated hub in the network. And on October 9th, University of Illinois System President Tim Colleen and I will be holding a news conference here in DeKalb to announce the outcome of those discussions. I'm very excited about our participation and involvement with DPI and the Illinois Innovation Network. We've identified research themes that include food systems innovation, water resource stewardship, and preparation for climate change. In addition to the research programs that involve a wide variety of academic areas and that play to the strength of our excellent faculty, we will also focus on public policy development and environmental law. The Innovation Hub concept includes multiple universities and provides an attractive platform for attracting private partners. It will provide an opportunity for our students and faculty to become involved in collaborative research, engagement, and education projects. I mentioned that one of our foci will be in the area of food systems innovation. And I would be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to put in a plug for an upcoming event. On the evening of November 13th at the Egyptian Theater, the DeKalb Area Agricultural Heritage Association, or DAHA, will be hosting an amazing event that I hope many of you will choose to attend. It's called An Evening with Innovators, and it will feature a conversation among three nationally recognized experts and two local entrepreneurs who have experience and success supporting food systems innovation. In the interest of full disclosure, I should say that I serve on the DAHA board and I've been involved in planning this event, but even if I weren't, I would make time to attend. A few weeks ago, I spoke at the dedication of a new historical marker at the former DeKalb Ave Monsanto building on Sycamore Road. And I told the audience then, one of the things that attracted me to DeKalb was its rich history of agricultural innovation. Capturing and celebrating that legacy provides a platform for networking that will help us to inspire the next generation of local entrepreneurs. 
The final game-changing project that I want to mention is the Annie Little North project. AGN is critically important to NIU. It's where a majority of our students live. It houses many of our Greek organizations. It's located on the border of our campus, and it is deteriorating. Nearly 25% of DePaul's total population lives in the AGN area, and it's time to reintegrate this neighborhood into our community. Mayor Spitz has already spoken at length about this project and the collaboration of the appointed task force with area residents and the city's consultants, but I would be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to reiterate NIU's strong support for this important undertaking and our commitment to partnership in this area. In the limited time that I have left, I want to mention a few other partnerships that are enhancing our university and community. Kishwaukee College is a tremendous asset to this community and a great partner with NIU. The programs we work on together are too numerous to mention, but I would like to mention for that the fifth year in a row, we have seen an increase in the number of students who transfer to NIU from Kish College to finish a four-year degree. We hope to encourage this positive trend. Therefore, under the new AIM High Scholarship Program, in fall 2019, qualifying entering transfer students from Kishwaukee College may be eligible for a one-time $3,000 Kishwaukee College transfer scholarship. My counterpart at Kish, Lori Borowitz, is here today, and I'd like to acknowledge her as a great partner and a great advocate for higher education in Illinois. Lori, could you stand? <laughs> Northwestern Medicine is a relative newcomer to our community, but they have not wasted any time in getting involved with important local initiatives. Northwestern has already assumed responsibility for the care of our student athletes, and I'm telling you, look for more announcements in the near future about partnerships between Northwestern and NIU. Northwestern CEO Jay Anderson is here today, and I want to acknowledge him as well. Jay. Two recent events that both showcased our community and engaged NIU students were made possible by our strong partnerships with the city and the community. The inaugural Campus Meets Community event brought 43 DeKalb businesses to our campus to showcase their offerings to NIU students. It was a beautiful day and students were out in force, thanks to the DeKalb and Sycamore Chambers for helping make that event a success. And then, as the mayor has already mentioned, the new and improved Corn Classic Run more than doubled its number of participants for an event that took runners through our campus, had them serenaded by our steel band, and wound up in downtown for a well-attended Taste of Decal finale. Again, it's amazing what we can do in partnership with each other. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about our partnerships with the local school districts. First, I want to let you know about a school grants program funded by our athletic conference, the Mid-American, to promote positive relationships with our local community. NIU has strong partners in both DeKalb Superintendent Jamie Craven and Sycamore Superintendent Kathy Countryman. So when the university received a total of $5,000 from the College Football Playoff Foundation Extra Yard for Teachers platform, we chose to provide $2,500 each to the DeKalb and Sycamore School Districts. With these funds, the DeKalb School District will support faculty and staff professional development and the implementation of diversity plan. The Sycamore School District will support second steps, an instructional program rooted in social and emotional learning that equips students to foster positive relationships, conflict resolution, and good choices. NIU's support for local high schools is also evident in our deployment of funds under the new AIM High Scholarship Program. Qualifying entering freshmen who will be 2019 graduates of a DeKalb County High School may be eligible for a one-time $3,000 DeKalb County Scholarship. Further, 
DeKalb County High School graduates who are active members of Youth Engaged in Philanthropy, or the YAP program, may be eligible for an additional $1,000 award if they meet the aim high family income thresholds. This is hot off the press. We put up the website to announce these programs towards the end of last week, and this is the first local announcement of them. If there's one thing that I'd like to leave you with, it's this. Whether we are university employees, city staff, healthcare workers, private business owners or employees, public school officials, our future and our successes are inexorably linked. Relationships are resources, and we dare not waste them. Every day, in every way, we are better together. Thank you.